Uh, I rise today, uh, 13th time, uh, for the waste of the week. Uh, so far, we've identified waste in many areas, ranging from the familiar, such as the duplication of government programs, uh, to uh, outrageous spending uh, and lack of control, uh, to the bizarre, uh, like the government-funded massages for New Zealand uh, rabbits. I've gotten more response on that than I have for some of the major items that we've listed. Every, every once in a while we throw in a, can you believe they do that? Um, <clears throat> to date, um, uh, we have uh, estimated here uh, nearly uh, $67 billion of uh, fraud, abuse, and waste. Uh, this is taxpayer dollars. These are taxpayer dollars that are coming in for programs which the Congressional Budget Office, uh, the General Accounting Office, others and best special uh, investigators uh, have looked at and said, why are we spending this money in the first place? It's a total waste, it's fraud, it's been abused. So we're at a level of uh, uh, nearly two thirds of our goal of $100 billion and moving forward. And so today um, I would like to talk about yet another fiscal uh, situation that we've come across that is costing the taxpayer uh, hard-earned dollars they're sending to Washington and they want accountability. Um, since we're doing uh, the defense bill here, a d debate on the defense bill this week, I thought I would look to the defense um, uh, issue um, and their contracting uh, uh, accountability as an example of yet the need for another uh, effort to uh, save the taxpayers' dollars because it's being uh, wasted. Now, it's not uncommon for every agency to uh, the federal government to use contractors. The F uh, Department of Defense uses contractors. Uh, they do necessary work, uh, provide services for our troops overseas. Uh, we owe them. We owe them, uh, given the sacrifices they are making. Uh, to provide those needed services in an effective, efficient way. But we also owe the taxpayer uh, clear oversight in terms of how this, their money is spent to make sure that these services that are provided, uh, these tasks that are undertaken by defense contractors as well as all federal contractors, be done so in an accountable uh, way. The um, issue uh, today <clears throat> arises out of a report by the Special Investigator General for Afghanistan Reconstruction. Um, that report identified a total of $135 million of questionable costs spent by one specific comp contractor, <clears throat> excuse me, between October 2001 <clears throat> and March 2014. <clears throat> In most cases, the funds that were spent he said, were not supported with adequate documentation or did not have prior approval. In another instance, this same contractor also overcharged the government by over a million dollars. And while those funds were, while that was discovered and those funds were repaid, the government lost about $37,000 in interest payments. Uh, that's a little bit of change uh, uh, in a whole total of billions of dollars being spent, but nevertheless, it's not all that small of an amount to a number of Americans who work awfully hard to pay their taxes, and they want it, those taxes to be used wi wisely. Again, this same contractor, in three other cases, violated federal procurement law in securing contracts uh, totaling almost $5 million. So here we have one contractor, one contractor that has uh, been uh, singled out among many, uh, but put in place $135 million of questionable costs. And the American taxpayer has every right to know how and where their tax dollars are spent, and particularly those tax dollars that are spent uh, uh, on providing our armed forces and men and women in uniform with the necessary services that they need. Um, this was compounded when, uh, in 2012, headlines showed that two former employees of this particular contractor, in a video, uh, were drunk or under the influence of narcotics during parties that were allegedly thrown 
quote, every other day at the contractor's operations center in Kabul. And so to compound the problem here, uh, not only were the costs in question uh, uh, determined, uh, but also uh, the character of the employees and the behavior of the employees was something that we certainly are not proud of. All of this happened, as the video shows, well, and we learned that weapons were present at the, and that bonfires were lit in outdoor patio, um, and employees would often throw live ammunition rounds and fire extinguishers into the flames. Uh, a strange way of providing entertainment, but not when you combine that with alcohol consumption. Uh, these kind of things uh, can happen, and that's unfortunate. Some may say, well, okay, that's a one-off. That's an aberration. I mean, this surely doesn't happen all the time. And there's a bad apple here, and there's a bunch of good apples in the, in the uh, barrel. And yes, there are contractors that are providing services to our men and women that are doing it in a responsible and legal way. But the Special Inspector for Afghanistan has also found multiple examples of similar types of waste. <clears throat> in fact, since its creation, the special investigator for inspector uh, for Afghanistan has undertaken 324 investigations. He's a busy man and has accounted for over $571 million of misspent taxpayer dollars. And this is just in Afghanistan. As you know, we have operations around the world and when we total all this up, who knows what that final number is. I'm happy to report that while these numbers are disturbing, uh, there is also progress being made. This special investigator for Afghanistan that I've referred to has made over 200 recommendations for reforms, and over 160 of those recommendations have been adopted by the Department of Defense, trying to help, help uh, safeguard federal dollars. And so I don't want to leave the impression uh, that something isn't being done about this. Nevertheless, um, uh, it is important that we bring these things to light so that we can put procedures in place that will prevent them from happening again. Also, I'm pleased that Title VIII of the bill that we are now debating on this floor, the National Defense Authorization Act for fiscal year 2016, directly addresses defense acquisition policy and management and would make several reforms to the contracting process. So action is being taken. And for instance, the bill that calls for the Department of Defense to establish a preference for fixed price contracts when developing new programs is a needed reform that is part of this legislation that we are debating now. Entering into fixed price contracts helps eliminate the kinds of questionable costs and cost overruns seen in many previous contracts. We need to make sure Congress needs to make sure, all of us need to make sure that our servicemen and women have the support that they need to defend our nation. And that's why it's so frustrating when we hear about these instances of contractors that are supposed to be supporting our troops, but instead are wasting money, whether intentionally or through error or through just simply misbehavior. So what we've done here today is add another $571 million to our taxpayer savings gauge. Uh, as you can see, we are pushing toward the goal of $100 billion. We hope to go past that. Um, there's no end of issues here that need to be addressed so that we can tell the American people that we are running an efficient, effective shop up here and we are being careful with their taxpayer dollars. Mr. President, I look forward to returning to the floor next week and uh, for my next installment of the week. And with that, I yield the floor and